How cool is this? Can your TV backlight do this? Actually change color with what's on the screen itself? This is absolutely stunning. If you're looking for a TV backlight, this is the one to go for. Hi guys, today we're reviewing a TV backlight. So this particular one is from Govi. This is the Govi Immersion RGB IC TV backlight. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So this is no ordinary TV backlight. It actually has a 1080p camera on there. And the way it works, it plugs into a unit here. The LED strip plugs into there as well. And what it does, it monitors the picture coming onto your TV and then changes the lights accordingly. So you get a more of an immersive feel to it. I think the best comparison to this is probably the Philips Ambilight, where the colors move along with what's happening on the screen. Now, this is suitable for or TVs between 55 inch and 70 inch. So let's take a brief look at the items you get in the packaging. I've already removed it only because the packaging is just a plain white box. You get a power adapter, output is 12 volts, 2000 milliamps. Cable length is 1.7 meters. You've got a DC connection on there. Obviously the plug is for the US, so I'll have to use a travel adapter to try this out. Cable quality seems fine. You get a controller on this, three buttons on here, so power, color mode, so you can change between different colors, and a brightness button here. You've got a small hole, and that's used for music syncs. If you wanted the LED strip to move along to music, you can do that as well. And coming along the side, you've got the connection point, so there's a USB connection point for the camera, and you've got a Type-C connection point for the LED strip. Coming around this way, you can see another hole and a DC power input on there. Looking on the back, 3M sticker so you can stick it onto your TV and input power requirements. Build is all plasticky on here. Next we have the camera, so a 1080p camera on there. You've got two mounting positions so you can mount it on top of your TV like so and underneath your TV like this. Now one thing I don't like the idea of is the sticky pads on here. So it's good they put 3M sticky pads on this but I wouldn't feel too comfortable sticking that onto my TV. So if I was placing it on top, I'd rather they had some sort of plastic notch on there where you can just place it on and it sort of clips on. So build quality of this is all plasticky and the cable length on this is 90 centimeters. USB type A connector on there. Quality of the cable feels good. Next, let's take a look at the LED strip. So the start point has a type C connector and the cable length Get connecting to the LED strip is 90 centimeters. Coming over to the LED strip, it's all waterproof on there. You can see the cut points, but with this strip, you wouldn't want to cut it, only because the way it interacts with the camera and controller, obviously it wants to display certain bits on areas, and if you've cut it away, I don't know how it's going to react. So the way to assume this, you just don't cut it safest option on this. Now the first strip, it comes in four sections. So this is for the side and the side areas are 70 centimeters each on the left and right. And now coming over, then you've got a flexible bit of wire. And so each flexible point is about 19 centimeters. And then the longer bits for the top and bottom, they come in at one meter 20. So build quality feels really good. It's got a 3M sticky pad on the back as well. So it should stick nice and firmly. Now in terms of installing the LED strip kit, obviously there's four areas on the LED strip. If you can get the TV on a wall, that's probably gonna be the ultimate experience for this only because you cover all four corners of the TV. Now in terms of sticking this, obviously you'd stick it on the back of your TV. And to note, obviously the maximum size TV supported is is 55 inches. Now this is my 55 inch TV and obviously the longest point is 170 and I've measured it from end to end. It's literally exact on the top there. So what will happen really is the flexible bits will just be bent inwards like so. So let me get this attached onto the back of the TV. So let's make a start at installing this on our TV. So I've got a 55 inch TV here. So it's literally exact size for the strip. I've taken the sticky pad off on the back. So the covering's off, so it's ready just to stick down. Now, the thing to be aware of, obviously this length here is literally the same length there. So you're gonna have to leave a bit of a gap for the extra wire there. So I might bring it in a bit perhaps. So if I now go perhaps like that, and then just attach it directly onto the TV like so. That gives a good coverage. You wanna keep it fairly close to the edge there, so the light can shine off it. Now for the next one, this should be interesting because the top length of the TV is exactly the same length as this as well. So again, let me peel that off. 
And if I now come in and stick like this, slightly inwards, and then we come in and just carry on sticking. Okay, you can see literally the whole area is covered now. I might bring that wrapped in a bit so you don't see the wire sticking up. If I can stick it there, even better. Perhaps I should just keep it like that. There you go, so the wire's just out of the way in the corner. And we'll do the same going round now. So for this corner again, peel this off and we'll go for something like that now. So we can just bring these bits in. There you go. Same thing again, straight down. There you go, wire's tucked in there and we'll bring it round there. And now the easier one would just be the one going at the bottom. So let me do that next. So there you go, sticking this on now. So obviously it's better if it's wall mounted so you can actually see that color appearing at the bottom. But obviously with this being on a table, you won't see really anything from this, but good obviously just to get it stuck on regardless. So there you go, just to show it's in position. So there you go, it can be fitted reasonably well on a 55 inch TV. Just gotta keep aware of the corners and just get it coming in a little bit so you don't see the wire sticking out from the sides. Okay, so in terms of getting this connected up, obviously three cables, one's a DC power, then you've got the type C connector, and then finally the type A USB connection point there for the camera. And that's it. And then you can stick this onto a surface or just put it at the side now in terms of positioning the camera, you wanna put it in the middle of the TV. Now coming in closer, as I've already mentioned, I wasn't too comfortable with the fact to sticking the front end onto the screen there. So what I've done, I've taken one of the boxes that some of this stuff came on, took the sticker off above there and just stuck the box on. Now, as well as that, what I've done, just taped it onto the back of the screen. So in a way it's a counterbalance. You can see there, hardly any movement to it. So all good, so it's worked out well. Now plugged in the power and turned it on. You can see a blue light's come on there. Obviously you've got three buttons on here. As I've said before, power button here turns it on. You can see some of the LED strip at the side there. If I press the button here, just alternate between different colors, just static colors. And then if I hold onto the button here at the bottom, brightness levels change. There you go, you can see it cycling through it. Once you like it, you just let go. So good, you've got some manual control on there. Let's make a start at setting up this device. So coming over to my Android phone, if I go to the Play Store, the app we're after is Govi Home. I've already got it installed as I already use Govi products. If I click open, just reveals what I've already got installed on here. And to add this one in, we just click on the plus. And if I scroll right down, that's the one we're after. Immersion TV strip light. Click on that. Next, we need to enable Bluetooth. So if I drop that down, turn on Bluetooth, give it a moment, and there you go, it's picked it up straight away. Click on that, and that's the device name, so I can rename it here. And I'll call it TV Backlight, done to that. Next, we can add it onto our Wi-Fi network. You don't have to do that, but the advantage of that is you can voice control it and remotely connect to it and turn it on and off if you wanted to. Now I wanna add it on only because I want it as part of my Google Home so I can control all my lights at the same time. So let me enter in my password off camera next. And now it's saying, please turn on your indoor lights and then power off TV. Stick the foam sticker on the screen as indicated above. So we've already done all this, ready to this. And now it's saying where you've installed the camera. I've installed it on the top, confirmed to that. And now it's saying which direction you've installed the backlight. So I've gone for counterclockwise. Confirm to that. And now what you have to do is line up the camera to point correctly to cover the screen. So I'll click got it to that. So what you're seeing now is the picture being taken from the camera. So now all we need to do is line it up with the picture. And there you go, that matches up with the bulk of the area. Next to that, slight border adjustments here. Submit to that. And there you go, it's connected. So now, first of all, to begin with, if you now look at the backlit color, you can see it's actually transitioning as the picture on the screen is changing. And this is what makes this product absolutely amazing because the camera is picking up the lights on the screen and replicating that on the back 
on the LED strips. So if I take the brightness up to the maximum, and obviously I've got Forza running here on my Xbox Series X, and you can see for yourself, it's pretty impressive, really is. And you can see for yourself that even turned off as it was transitioning to dark, and then now the scenery in Forza here, this is just the start screen, good indication of how it works. Very impressive, very impressive indeed. And this is what sets it apart from the standard TV backlights because it just takes it to the next level where it transitions between the different scenes going on. So now coming over here, let's look at the options you have on here. So in settings over there, you can rename it, you can change the Wi-Fi settings, recalibrate it, and it can even integrate with Alexa and Google Assistant. You've got the MAC address of the item and the product model there. Back from here, then you've got a power button, so you can just turn it off. And you can see the difference straight away, nothing going on in the background. And if I now turn it on, there you go. I've always wanted a backlit TV like this, only because I think the immersion feel is much better. Now, in comparison, you could buy a Philips Ambilight. Now, I was tempted to buy that, and that has this built in already. And the advantage of that is you don't have the silly camera really hanging off the top like that. In terms of gaming, it wasn't ideal only because of the refresh rates on it. I couldn't see it reaching up to 120 hertz, so hence why it sort of put me off buying that. So now this is probably the best of both worlds. So I'll get what's on the Philips Ambilight together with having a 120 hertz TV. So now coming over to the app, you can see firmware version there connected. So it's connected via Bluetooth. So I should in theory just be able to turn off my Bluetooth and it's connected via Wi-Fi. Lighting effect center coming in there. So these are ones other people I guess have set up. You can see different people have done and you can just pick one to apply that back from there. Timer, so you can set it on timer to come on and come off. Coming back from there, then you've got brightness levels. Obviously, if you're finding it too bright, just turn it down slightly and just get it to the level you want it. But watching a movie, for instance, would be quite good as well as it's changing. Then you've got DIY. So you can, can set up your own DIY colors on here. So if I went for subsection, apply, there you go, multiple colors all the way around. So if you just wanted static colors, then this is what you'd go for. And you could have it moving as well. Just cycling between the different colors. Let's go for cycle there, apply that. There you go. Should see it changing. Let's speed it up a little bit so we can see it better in action. And this is the sort of function that you'd get from a standard backlight. There you go. You can see it moving along. Subsection is quite good. Obviously you're getting multiple colors within the back of this. Now, going back from here, then you've got modes. So different modes here. So first of all, music mode, test, one, two, three, test. There you go, music modes there. So as movies are playing, you can have it changing accordingly. Then you've got video. And this is the key one here, obviously, for the camera to work and process what's going on on the screen. So the other ones don't work in relation to that. So color, will just be a static color. You can see that blue. And then if I come down, so I can set multiple colors as well. So you can see now if I select the whole section here, change it to a single color. And now if I select chunks of it, and there you go, it's a dream color available on here. So you can do subsections of the strip and give it different colors, which is really cool. You can also even turn off sections if you wanted to. So now if I select an area and turn, press that one, there you go, that chunk's just been turned off. So you can see in the side left and the top, a section's been turned off. If I carry on, there you go. And I can just keep going turning more areas off. So you just have a very subtle amount of light if you wanted to, which is nice because a lot of functionality available in this then. So you can flip between different sort of options. And if it's too bright and you just wanted minimal, you could have that as well. And now coming down below, you've got color selection here, just to show. And then here, warm white and cool, cold white. And then finally a color wheel, you can select 
different colors. If you wanted a precise color on there and coming across, there you go. You can flip between the different ones there. Coming across, coming across, then you've got this as well. So different palettes there. Be impressed, lots of functionality behind this one. Scenes, so you've got some default scenes on here just to show that sunrise. Then we've got sunset, movie, dating, romantic, twinkle. That's a bit nuts. <laughs> um, candlelight, energetic, breathe. That's pretty cool. Snowflake, crossing, and rainbow. Rainbow is pretty cool. I do like that. So that's the dream color effect on there. But the key one, like I've said, is the video mode. And then looking in there, you've got part of it or all of it. So if I click on all, then you've got saturation level as well. And you've got different modes, movie and game. You can see for yourself, the way it's processing, it isn't too bad. It's sort of keeping up. There's maybe a very subtle delay as it's obviously picking up the color and then displaying it. The best LED backlight you can go for, definitely, because it does mimic what's on the screen. And I get that question many a time for some of the cheaper ones I've done. I've done a cheaper one from Govi, and that just does static colors or music sync, which is great, but if you wanted that extra immersion, this is the way to go. Next, just to show how to get the backlight working with both the Amazon and Google voice control products. So if I go to the home app first, just look at the Google home one, click on the plus, go to setup device, works with Google. The service we're after is called Govi Home, add that in. And with the app, you can sign up with an account. So make sure you use the same credentials here. Once you've done that, coming back, back again. So there we have it. So TV backlights are so clicking on there. You have a limited number of options. Obviously it's better going via the Govi Home app, but you can see, you turn it off, turn it on, change the brightness levels, and then just set a static color on there. Let's set something blatant, so there you go. And obviously this won't go into the TV mode where it's transitioning with the pictures. So in terms of controlling via voice control, standard options on and off, as you can see, brightness levels and color. That's all you can do with that in terms of voice control. Next, let me show how to set up with the Amazon device. So going into the Amazon app, going to more skills and games, and we search for Govi Home. That's the skill you're after. Obviously, same thing again, use your credentials for the app, enter them in, and it will link in with a skill. Now, if I click devices, scroll along, go to all devices. And if we find the device now, TV backlight, there it is. If I select that, same options on here as well. So if I turn it off, turn it on, change brightness levels and set a color. And voice control, same thing here as well. Just what you've got in the options there. Now here's an example of watching a movie or even a YouTube video. See for yourself, colors changing around as the environment's changing. Let's give it a few moments so you can see for yourself how it performs. Not too bad, picks up the colors reasonably well, as you can see. Now here it is in action with Fortnite. So in terms of gaming, just to see for yourself, you can see the transitioning of colors. That's pretty cool. You're like facing the green. It's all gone green, looking up, it's gone blue. And now coming in. It's not too bad in terms of speed transitioning between the different colors. You can see a subtle delay, very subtle, but not bad at all. Now let's come in over here. There you go. Works well, works very well. Let's see now. 
Again, looking at the sky, go down, lighter color over here, back to green. I think it's excellent. Really am impressed by it. So there you go, works really well, even when it's gaming. Next, I thought it's worth just showing the TV backlight with a static picture. And you can see for yourself, it works really well. You can see the different colors coming in on the actual picture that's on the screen. Looks pretty cool. Obviously, I haven't made any additional adjustments with this, and it's just picking up what's on the screen. And just to show at the back, you can see for yourself, colors transitioning. You can see the yellows and blues, light blue at the bottom. And that matches up with what's there. And like I said, probably better if it was mounted on a wall, the TV itself. So make the most of the colors coming around it. One thing to perhaps mention is the fact the camera's on and obviously it's watching the screen. If you're worried in terms of privacy, I'd say don't connect it to your Wi-Fi then then at least you know it's only working locally in your home and just connect to it via Bluetooth. I don't think you've really got any concerns in terms of privacy, but then, you know, at least you've got that option to work without Wi-Fi. So there you go, really is the most ultimate TV backlight you can buy for your TV, only because it actually mimics what's on the screen. Now in terms of price, obviously it's gonna be more expensive than your standard backlight because there's more tech behind this one. Negatives wise, I'd say don't like the fact you've got a camera hanging over your TV and the fact they expect you to stick it onto the screen. I didn't really like that idea, but I've shown you another way of doing it. Obviously you can put a bit of a weight on there, tape it up and just get it hooked onto there. I think the reason they've done the stickiness is in case it accidentally gets nudged and it falls off. But for my situation here, it's unlikely that's gonna happen only because I'm the only one really in this room most of the time. The other thing is the power source. Obviously it needs more power than a standard TV backlight. So it needs to be plugged in. So it would have been nice if it ran off a five volt connector so I could plug it straight into the TV, but you've got to keep into consideration the amount of tech behind this. Obviously it's got to run the camera as well, so probably not enough power to run everything at the same time. So understandable why they've done that. But all in all, a great product, highly recommend. I'm going to be using this now going forward. I think it's the best setup you can have with the colors changing with what's happening on the screen. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone looking to purchase a TV backlight, the ultimate one to purchase. Details including purchasing links are in the description below. Hang around for the end cards for some more LED strip lights. Drop me a like if you've liked this video. Let me know what you thought of this TV backlight. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.